Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is a Valentine tank. It's a tier 3 British light tank. It's located on the south spawn of Himmelsdorf and it's under the command of Clean Sweeper Marksman. Now, Clean Sweeper Marksman has recently changed his name to Cursed by Design, so you might see a few replays by him a little later on with a different name. Okay, game started. Well, this tank can actually have two different guns. The stock gun is a 40mm, the two pounder gun, and the top gun is a six pounder gun, which is 57mm. It's kind of a, well, it's been described as a pocket heavy tank because it's basically a light tank, but it is basically very heavy when it comes to uh, the armor. Very tough indeed. Now you can see that he's actually got uh, 40 mm the two pounder gun and he's uh, capable of 78 mm of pen 50 alpha his reload time is 2.91 the standard reload for the uh, valentine is 4.79 and that's for the uh, that's actually for the top gun the six pounder looks like I don't have the time for the uh, four pounder but I think it's about three seconds per shot I'll confirm that later on okay the Valentine they made 8,275 this tank and they also supplied not just the British but also the Soviets so they got a fair number of these tanks and I think one of the reasons why they liked it was because it was so robust incredibly strong uh, it's an infantry tank, so it's designed to drive alongside the troops and provide them with support against any anti-tank guns or against any uh, field guns or gun emplacements that they came across. It was originally designed in 1938 and uh, they don't actually know who actually named it, but they know who built it. It was built by Vickers Armstrong. And they stopped building them in 1944, but they didn't stop using them until 1960. So they lasted for 20 years. In fact, actually, they were sold to a variety of countries. Well, BT-5. It's a Tier 3 game with uh, Tier 3 tanks in it. Oh! Yeah, it's a long way away. Oh, easy shot on the BT-5 there, but unfortunately he didn't get that one in. And now he can. That's better. He connected. Got a high roll. And he's got the kill. Now, the British used this tank quite successfully during the... Uh, the war in the desert. Oh, AMX 38. Now he's got tough armor on the side, but oh yes, he amaracked him. So he got a demolition expert off that one. One shot went straight through the amarac and blew him up. Now we do have an enemy tank in the cap area, and I think it's that LTP it's just around the corner. And our little uh, lawnmower is going around to kill him. UE 57. Unfortunately, there's an enemy Valentine just around the corner. Well, he's managed to scare away the enemy tank, the LTP, and now he's going to go after the Valentine. I think the LTP's probably... Oh, he's still there. He's still around the corner. Okay, the Yui's found him. Can he get shot between that gap? Yes, he can, and he's gone. But it wasn't King Sweeper Marks who got the kill. It was actually an M2 medium. So there's still one tank down on the enemy. And there's a Panzer 3 Ausrung E about to come down the road on the other side of uh, this block of houses. So he just goes around the corner and there's an enemy tank there. No, he's gone further on towards the cap. Pretty sure that Panzer 3 knows that we're here, but he's a about to come across somebody who's going to do a lot of damage and he looks like he's about to die but we just lost the UE57 he was taken out by the enemy uh, LTP and then the LTP and the Panzer 3 are both in the cap so clean sweeper is doing a bit of a 
run around the houses. And there's the LTP. Gets one into the rear. Oh, he set light to him. But a premium fire extinguisher went off. And that saved him. Panzer III is coming up behind us. So you need to turn around. Yep. He's behind you. <laughs> okay. Turn around quick. He's going around the block. I think that Panzer III is going to chase you around the block. And there's the LTP coming in sight. No, didn't get with that shot, but no, couldn't get him on the second shot either. But the Panzer III did actually get taken out, and here comes the LTP. After doing that quick run around the block, he's about to go straight past us. No, don't no, look that way. Look the other way. <laughs> Crumbs. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. No, nope, missed him. And unfortunately, took a round in the tracks from the LTP. Well, there's only three enemies left. But Clean Sweeper Marksman has two kills already. Can he win this one? The LTP is... No, he's gone down the road towards the hill. In fact, he's chasing down our M2 medium. And he's gone. So he's out again. The there's only two enemies left. And it appears that one of them is up on top of the hill. The other one's the Panzer... S35, their version of the uh, the French um, trying to remember which tank it is but it's the um, oh it will come back to me the Panzer S35 <laughs> Samur S35 that's what I was trying to think okay So this replay is from over two years ago, or was it just under two years ago? Quite an old replay. I had to pull out one of my hard drives to find the, uh, the client to actually get this one to run. Both enemies are on the same street. Okay, this is where you can take both of them out because he's got better armour than them. Just keep pumping those shots into those guys. I don't want for the tracks to keep him tracked so he stays in one place. He's just blasting away that M. Stewart. Oh, no, he lost the track and he's actually allowing the guy. That's better. Got him in the track that time. Holds him in place and then you just keep pumping those rounds in. This, the Panzer S35 is firing into our tracks on the other road. Finish him off. Yep, got him. Now turn to face the enemy. He had to fix his tracks to get moving. He's going to turn back and, yeah, our M2 medium's going to die. Yeah, he didn't have enough hit points left and the Panzer S35 does have good armour. He's going to shoot through the arches. Nice. Easy went through. Oh, what do you do there? You fired in front of him. That's better. That one went in. Even though it's got good armour on the front, it's fairly weak on the sides. And go for the kill shot. Yep, got him. And that's the end of the game. So a nice little victory there for Clean Sweeper Marksman. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was the second class tanker for Clean Sweeper Marksman in the Valentine. He managed to get a demolition expert because he blew up one of the enemy tanks. In fact, that was the AMX-3080. He also got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He did get four exactly. A shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. And a fiber effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got eight on this one. He got a cool headed for blocking ten ricochets or non-penetrating shots in a row. And he also got a steel wall in that game for blocking the most damage from the enemy and his win 8 was 7122 which is super unicum standard let's have a look at team score well despite the fact that he got the highest damage on his team at 1112 hit points clean sweeper marksman didn't get the high caliber because he was beaten by that panzer s35 he got 1534 hit points of damage he picked up a cool headed and a high caliber the second highest damage, or third highest damage, I should say, say after Clean Sweeper, was in fact that M2 medium. We've got 
got a bit carried away with himself, thinking he could easily take down the Samoa S35, rather, not Samoa, rather the Panzer S35. He did 1,014 hit points after getting four kills, but unfortunately his armour just wasn't up to surviving against an S35. When it came to kills, it was shared between Clean Sweeper Marksman, the M2 Medium and the Panzer S35 all had four kills apiece. And when it came to base XP, it was the Panzer S35 on his own team with the best here with um, 694. That's not on his team, but the best player overall was in fact that Panzer S35 on the enemy team with 753. So even though he lost the game... He actually got a better XP than Clean Sweeper and the Panzer S35 on his own team. Clean Sweeper came in third with 645. He fired 30 rounds in that game, got 22 direct hits on the enemy and 19 penetrations. Damage of 1,112 hit points, of which 120 were at more than 300 meters. 26 hits received from the enemy, only two of which actually penetrated, 24 non penetrations and 948 hit points of damage blocked by armour. Five enemy vehicles were damaged, four were destroyed, and 16 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 19,092 credits for the game, and after ammunition resupply and repair, well, didn't actually have to have ammunition resupply, just had repair, he ended up with 18,858 credits profit, 967 XP for the battle, times two for the first victory, took away 1,935 experience points altogether. So the Valentine actually does have a fairly easy stop grind, mainly because not only does it have very good armour, but that two pounder gun is pretty good at stock um, and stock configuration. So uh, even if you'd like to have the six pounder, which of course has got the 57 millimeter gun, slightly more damage around the 85 hit points, I think it is, or is it, no, it's 75 alpha. Yes, that one, 75 alpha. But it's actually kind of better having the two pounder gun to just blast away at the enemy because it has such good penetration. Let's have a look at the armor. Well, that's not the armor. Let's have a look at it. Ah, oh, here we are, right. Don't get too close. You can see there's lots of red because it's very thick armor for the tier. The front of the vehicle is 60 millimeters thick. And remember, this is in a, a tier three. It's actually quite high. The lower plate is 20 millimeters, but it's angled. So you get 37.5 shells are more than likely going to ricochet off at that angle, though. The upper plate, again, 30 millimeters, but it's angled so well, you're actually getting 62 out of that. The area around where the driver is, you can see that here, is only 20 millimeters or zero if you actually aim the gun port, but only zero basically there, or 20 millimeters, and you're actually getting about 36 overall. But if you just aim slightly below that and get it wrong, you are facing 60 millimeters of armor, difficult to pen. The uh, the turret armor is actually very strong, 65 millimeters. So aiming for the turret is a bit of a mistake. Uh, the best place to aim for this vehicle is either to get to the uh, rear of it and shoot through the rear or that engine deck area because it's very thin there 10 millimeters that's that corrugated area right on top of the engine deck you can pen that or you can pen the rear of it because it's only 17 millimeters only giving you effective 18. the size of this tank is 60 millimeters all round so this is what it's like as a a little mini heavy tank because it's very thick armor on the sides and the front and it's only if you can penetrate through that armor with APCR that you can actually take one of these down if you can get alongside it you hit this area here because the shells will go straight through let's have a look at the modules okay this is the module view you can see the driver is actually sitting in the middle now remember it's very well angled here it's very heavy there, and in fact, the weakest spot is just where those viewports are. You're unlikely to get through the front of this vehicle. Even if you can get the lower plate, chances are the shells are going to bounce off that spot. It's also fairly unusual in another way, because it doesn't have a gunner. The commander is also the gunner and the radio operator, which means that uh, if you lose the commander, your gun gunnery goes down as well. So you have to get that commander back into operation. It does have a loader though, and he's on the left-hand side of the tank as you're looking at it. The radio is actually behind in the bustle. But remember, this is all strong armor on the turret. You ideally want to try and 
penetrate the engine at the back you can see that there is an area where you can pen uh, but chances of actually getting the module is fairly difficult because the module is actually below where the heavy armor is it's 16 millimeters of armor all along here on the side so trying to get that is really difficult but if you can get behind it you can see there's two fuel tanks you can punch through that area and hit the fuel tanks and if you can that will set the thing off and you'll either get a fire or you get an engine damage but trying to get the amarak on this thing is very very difficult because the weak spot is only this area here and uh, if you try and get the lower area very difficult indeed you just can't get through so it's uh, it is like a heavy tank a very heavy tank in terms of its heavy armor so well uh, ideally you either have to spend apcr or you just have to outmaneuver it and get behind it but remember this thing moves fairly slowly but it does have very good traverse so this thing can turn with you and try and keep its gun to bear and the, the fact that that gun keeps pumping rounds out every two seconds or so can make it very difficult to take down a valentine unless you get two tanks doing it at the same time i hope you enjoyed that replay if you did Please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And we'll be featuring another replay by Clean Sweeper Marksman. This one was from July of 2020, so it's not quite two years, but it's close. Uh, and we'll have some more featuring very shortly. Thanks for watching.